Welcome back to M Hood Fishing, everybody. So, inland shipping companies recently just declared force majeure on the river. Force majeure basically means force of nature or force of God. It's being declared so these shipping companies won't get penalized when their shipments are late, either coming down or up the river. And it's because the river is extremely low. There have been closures called recently, mostly between south of Memphis down to Greenville, uh, Greenville Mississippi. The Corps is dealing with that the best they can, trying to dredge things. What's happening right now with shipping, from what I've been, been reading over the last couple days, is companies are starting to do short loads. They're short loading their barges. Yeah, the river is really low, but it's not a record low. It's only the eighth lowest on record. I wonder what this is on record. This house does this every year, and each year there's more and more. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's more than I saw last year. That's a lot of stuff. And it's all taking some form of electricity, whether to inflate it and light it up or just to light it up. Whew. Want some solar panels to do that, don't you? All right, back to the river. The river's extremely low right now because of an ongoing drought in the Midwest. It's low down here, it's low everywhere. We're in the southern basin, and the northern basin is really low. Down here, our level today, as, as of filming this video, is just below three feet, according to the gauge that's a little upriver from where I'm at, at Carrollton. It's different as you go up and down the river, but it's low everywhere. There have been groundings, barges getting grounded. Those are, some of those have been refloated. Some are being refloated as we speak or just sitting there. It's bad. It's bad when this happens, when the river is really low and they start declaring force majeure. And when we start getting closures because of, you know, low places on the river like there's there's some spots where you can only dredge so much why it's bad is because this is fall farmers up in the midwest are in the middle of harvest so you got to bring stuff like soybean and grain down the river but you also got to bring stuff like uh coal up and down it fuel not so much oil oil does come up and down it but not not as much as you would think it's fuel as in coal grain and fertilizer a lot of fertilizer goes up the river the farmers need that right now here we go see the eyes glowing it's bad because oh there you go oh that's a cat i was wondering what that was force majeure and closing the river is bad bad for the economy especially this time of year I'm just chatting about this stuff because it's on my mind. I live on the river, fish it a lot. Right now we're headed to a spot on the river. This should be a pretty decent night to run into some nature because it's the full moon. And it's, we're, we're in its fullest right now. It's kind of bright out here. There's no clouds. Finally getting into the woods. I have to go slow because there's been some trail Karens lately. I haven't ran into the actual people or a person, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Every time I'll come down here, and there'll be something laying across the trail. Two days later, I'll come down and something else is laying across the trail. I keep having to throw this stuff to the side because if you're not paying attention and you hit that on your bike, it could cause you issues. It's been super dry down here, so it's not like people are trying to cover up mud holes with sticks it's just sticks on the trail more sticks on the trail someone's been down here recently you see this wet stripe here going this way it's like someone dragged a cart or something Oh. 
This is a loading dock and an abandoned train trestle all together. The train used to come down here to a loading dock, unload and load. No longer, no longer does it do that. So the tide is coming up right now. Some of this is walkable, some of it's not. Creepy, huh? There's a big old cement pad on top of these pylons. I think there's tracks up there because this is part of the trestle right here. See how far I can walk before I start sinking down. I'm starting to sink, but it's not bad yet. See how close I can get to the water. I'm starting to sink in the sand here. It's not that stable. There's <clears throat> fire damage up there if you guys can see that. Here, I'll put the check that out. See how burnt those timbers are. Got trees growing here. I gotta be careful with this powerful flashlight I'm using. I don't want to freak out the mariners out there. And I need to not sink in the mud here. I have not actually been back here in a while and things have changed a little bit. I'm trying to find my way to something. This will work. Nice, that looks nice and flat. That's gonna work very good. Before I get to work here, what I wanna do, look at that. See that? There's this girl and she's having a conversation with me about these right here. Looks like a little bead, right? That is what we call a nurdle. That's plastic in its raw form. And shipped like this in giant bags, these little beads, it goes to a place and then they melt them down. They do a process and make plastic products. There's a lot of these here and there because there was a spill a while ago. I think it was called the nurdle apocalypse. They were just everywhere on the river. Yes. I'm gonna make ginger tea back here at this spot. Also gonna build a fire, chill for a bit before we go fishing. I've got this ginger nice and cut up, but only in sizes such as that. Put it in my pot. Ooh, I got one sandy. Put that to the side, clean it in a sec. I'm gonna put that whole bag in there. I'm gonna make a strong cup of ginger tea. I don't want to waste it, so I'll just clean it off. Throw it in there. Add our water. I'm going to add some black tea to this. I've got two different kinds here. I'm going to throw one of these in. This is a builder's tea. It's a lot like a Yorkshire tea. Strong, strong, makes a strong cup of tea. I like this kettle because it does not whistle. Perfect for when you're stealthing, when you don't want people to hear you whistling in the woods. All right, I'm gonna turn this down really low. I don't want it to boil too fast. I want it to boil slowly. I want it to come to a boil very slowly. It's gonna take a little bit of time to steep that tea to get it nice and strong. pretty much have too much water in that kettle. So if I had a lot of heat under there and I got it to a rapid boil, it would just come out really fast. It'll probably do that eventually. But because I have so much chopped ginger in there, if I put the proper amount of water, I wouldn't even get a whole cup. So that's why we need that. We don't really need it to boil. We need it to just steep for a while and then slowly come to a boil. Don't necessarily need to make ginger tea by boiling it for an hour or so. First time I had ginger tea was on the East Coast in New York, hanging out with this Rasta guy. Wasn't old, but he was a cool dude. His name was Ollie. Late at night, just like it is now. It's around midnight right now. Ginger tea is has a lot of medicinal qualities to it. It just chills your muscles out, makes you all relax. But we are adding caffeine to give it a little bit of a pep. Awesome. 
great thing about this spot is there's plenty of firewood. We'll use this as fire starter. Well, <laughs> we're also going to use cotton balls soaked in Vaseline as well. And I'm setting this fire up real close to the water for effect. I mean, this is just, the purpose of this fire is just to keep us company, right? I'm not gonna be cooking over the fire tonight. Hopefully the fire works out good. It is a difficult spot to build a fire because the ground is wet. But it is going to be a cool spot for a fire once we get it sizable. Now that is looking good. That's a fire. The tea is looking fire too. Look at that just steaming away. All right, we need to not let it boil over. I turned the flame down a little more with that set for a bit longer. I think this is an awesome spot to build a sizable fire like that just to chill because you got, let's give a little more light here so you can see what I'm talking about. You've got that base and then this base is two big concrete blocks and then it's pretty much right on the water. The tide is going to come in to meet the fire. The tide is pretty much going to engulf the fire eventually. We might even have a wake from a ship if we get one come up into the fire and make it really smoky. So we are in an anchorage that is that mechanical hum you hear in the distance and those lights you see there. There's a ship here and here we're getting we're flanked by ships and as you walk this way you see even more of them down in the anchorage with lots of light on tonight here's that one that we're flanked by on our right side let's turn on the light here so you can see the remnants of this trestle that came out to the loading dock see how far how close i can walk to it without sinking too bad i just got to keep moving or I will sink. Pretty crazy looking trees growing out of it and everything. It's a pretty chill spot to be right now. Wow. <laughs> and there's my tea. I was kind of looking around under here to see if there was anything living. It's not a bug. Birds or bats or something. Look at this rope here. That's been there a while. Probably washed up there. I'm calling it done. That black tea has got it looking nice and dark. It smells good, I can smell it. I think I got it good. It's gonna be nice and strong. Gotta wait for this though. Almost no honey in here, but just enough to for this. If I can get it out. Needs a shot of milk. That is good. It's nice. I like it with milk in it. I'm doing more of a bush crafty kind of vlog tonight because I'm not a big fan of fishing the full moon, especially in the middle of the night. Towards the end here, after we chill, we will try to go do some fishing. But just wanted to sit out here in the woods on the river, drink some ginger tea with a bit of a fire. Check this out at night. I've been here before, but never on a full moon. This fire is looking good. It's burning down good too. You can feel the heat coming off it. It's not cold, it's not hot. It's in the 60s. It's a pretty chill spot. It is really, really shallow in front of this structure. That's why you've never seen me fish this. Look at, look at my footprints here. Look at, it's kind of gushy. And then I step back, and water starts to come in there. This ground is actually really wet. It's because the tide was out. Now it's slowly coming back in. High tide is almost 4 a.m. All right, we're gonna take the tea and walk into the woods while we're waiting for the fire to burn down. 
sort of. First, we got a bushwhack through here. We are tracing back these stumps, what remains of the trestle. Get through here. Yeah, opens up. As we come back from the river here, start to get bigger pieces. I kind of showed some on the way in. There's what remains of one right there. A lot of it's missing or barely there. Here's a steel girder that's just laying here, half buried in the mud. But once we get back here in the woods far enough, something magical appears. And we are under the beginning of it. Can you guys see that? We got the big light. If you look up, Here's what is remaining of the tracks. There are rails up here. I don't know how intact they are. It's just covered in nature. Pretty creepy at night. We'll come up as far as we can back here. Oh, nature is taken. It's looking worse this year than it did last year. Stuff's just hanging everywhere. Look at this, isn't this crazy? No trains coming on this now. I'll come back through here. Spider webs everywhere. Look at this one right here. Pretty crazy, I'll angle that down a little bit. Can you guys see that? I don't wanna get him on me. Let's see if I can squeeze through here. You get far enough back here and you just can't get any further really all right so now this is what i wanted to come look at all right so we only got one rail up there right now and here is the second rail right here laying down here look at this wow just hanging out all right we're not going to go any further because it starts to get to be real hard pack as you can see pretty thick stuff pretty awesome wow if you're curious how i stay abreast to what's going on with shipping on the river i watch youtube channels dedicated to it one of my favorites is actually called what's going on with shipping i like the channel i watch it a lot makes very interesting content i'll have a link down in the description to the dude's channel he is a mariner what's going on with shipping produced a video just a couple days ago before filming this about force majeure on the river I keep wanting to say force de jure i don't know why look at this i found another track this one <laughs> how many years is that going to be visible it's buried at both ends there's got to be some other tracks just buried in the sand all over the place here whether you fish or not coming out here just hanging out in the woods for a little bit on the river does a lot for the soul it's almost 2 a.m it's about 20 to 2 a.m so we're going to go ahead and get out of here the fire is out I'm gonna spend just a little bit of time here fishing it doesn't look good though look at this it's as if there's no current maybe we're in between tides I thought it was gonna be uh, later than sooner but it looks like we are look how calm it is way too calm I'm only going to fish a sabiki here it's 2 a.m. right now. Let's give this a good hour. We're gonna call this at three, unless, unless it turns out to be just the best fishing I've ever had here, which I don't know, doesn't look like it yet. No, we're near it. Ooh. Yes. Oh, ah. Oh. I didn't think it was gonna happen. Yes. Since this is really, really low here, just like the last time I was here, it's about the same level. 
hitting snags a lot faster but i had a hit and then i had a fish so yeah i don't know if that means i'm gonna stay a long time but did get a fish here so there's that i haven't lost the sabiki yet it's still the same one i started with though i have lost branches hitting stuff when i say branches the branch line is the line the hook is on not the main line the branch lines come off the sabiki i'll show you real quick see this little line right here that's the branch line and it's usually less of a pound test than the main line here we go gotcha 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 what do we got oh second fish is a white bass yes that's not a bad size for on the sabiki that's pretty good this is not giant whoa it's trying to slip out not a giant white bass but that is a good size for the conditions i face Ooh. okay yeah you're right so a tanker went by and its wake produced what we'll call current but going up river and I had a few hits while I was casting in that and I got that white bass. I think that ship pushed some fish closer in here. Got another one. Whoa, yes. And that is a white bass again. Kind of smaller, smaller than the first one. And it's a little better than I expected. It's only three fish, but yeah, better. It is three o'clock now. I'm gonna call it right here. Down in the description is a link to the video where what's going on with shipping talks about everything that I talked about on the river right now. His video came out just a few days ago. This is really current stuff. It's kind of bad when they start closing parts of the river down, when shipping companies start declaring force majeure, bad for the economy, so get ready, everybody. Yeah, you're right. It was a really fun night just to come out, chill, make some ginger tea, hang out in the woods for a bit, and then try for some fish. I didn't get skunked, so that's a good thing, but I'm ready to get out of here. So thanks for watching, liking, sharing, and subscribing, and I will see you next time.